good day dear first year students today we are going to do a sonnet by william shakespeare and as we all know that sonnet was developed to its zenith by william shakespeare he wrote 154 sonnets in all and his sonnets are addressed to two people number 1 the dark lady and number 2 the fair youth the identity of the fair youth is still unknown people guess who must have been the fair youth so this poem is titled let me not to the marriage of true minds this is a sonnet and sonnet is a poem of 14 lines and the characteristics of william shakespeare's sonnets is that it is divided into four parts it consists of three quatrains quatrains means a stanza of four lines so three quatrains 3 into 4 is equal to 12 and a final couplet consisting of two lines so the basic theme of the poem is the qualities of true love he explains the qualities the characteristics of true love in this poem i will read the first quatrain and then explain the meaning to you let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove oh no it is an ever fixed mark so he says let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments marriage means union impediments means obstacles he says that let me not admit obstacles in the union of true minds true minds means true souls there can be no obstacles in the union of two true minded people so he says let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments it means that i can't believe that there can be any obstacle in the path of true love in the union of true minds because love is obstacle free so here the word marriage means union and union does not only mean a um, uh, physical union but union means the soul the union of souls love is not love which alters when it alteration finds alters means changes he says love is not true love if it changes when it find any change so he explains very clearly that i don't believe that love is love if it changes when it find changes so love never changes love is constant or bends with the remover to remove bends with the remover to remove means when the beloved is removed from the sight love does not goes that out of sight and out of mind no he says it never bends with the remover to remove when the object of your love is removed from your eyes true love never changes it rather grows oh no it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken it is the star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown although his height be taken <clears throat> now he gives two comparisons in the coming quatrain he says oh no it is an ever fixed mark he compares true love with two things first of all he says it is an ever fixed mark ever fixed marks mean the lighthouse if you must have seen a lighthouse in the sea it is so very steadfast it is so very uh, strong and it is soundly rooted 
in the sea that it is never shaken so he says oh no it is an ever fixed mark it means true love so here is a very good example of metaphor so he says love is ever fixed mark ever fixed mark means the lighthouse which is built in the sea that looks on tempest and is never shaken looks on tempest means tempest tempest means sea storm the storms of the ocean looks on tempest means that faces the tempest and is never shaken the steadfastness of true love is shown here that like a lighthouse true love is never shaken and it can face any sort of storms so true love can face can bear any problems like the lighthouse so here uh, is a very good imagery that life is like a sea and true love is like a lighthouse and when there when there are problems in the sea when there are sea storms problems in life the lighthouse is fixed it is never shaken so true love is never shaken with the problems of life it is never shaken it is it is the star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown although his height be taken it is the star to every wandering bark another comparison it is a star star here it means the pole star so the pole star the love sorry true love is like a pole star it is the star to every wandering bark b a r k bark means a boat so wandering bark it is a star to every wandering bark so what does the poet want to say here he wants to say that as the pole star is ever fixed it shows direction we can make out the direction looking at the pole star so if the bark wanders bark means a small ship a boat if it goes astray if it loses direction it can um it can make out its direction looking at the pole star so true love always shows you the right path true love never ask you to accept the wrong path true love always shows the right path so here beautiful characteristics of true love are shown so it is the star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown although his height be taken whose worth is unknown means it is precious and we never know its worth until and unless we lose direction whenever we lose direction true love comes to our support whenever a wandering bark wandering bark means a ship which has lost its direction so whenever one uh, a person is under th- uh, these situations he come to know the value of true love so that is why he says whose worth is unknown means until and unless we lose direction we never come to know the true worth of the pole star the pole star comes to our help to choose the right direction although his height be taken it is possible to take the height of uh, the pole star though we know that it is impossible but still he says that we know it that it is uh, fixed on a very great height but we don't know its worth until and unless we lose uh, direction love is not time's fool though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come love alters not with his brief hours and weeks but bears it out even to the edge of doom beautiful stanza he says love is not time's fool love is not a plaything love is not a toy to play and throw away and to forget so he says love is not time's fool love does not ta- change with time and true love is not a plaything to play just to play and forget no it is something to be kept for life long 
so love is not time's fool means time does not have effect on true love though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come he says time can have its effect on rosy lips and cheeks time can change the beauty of the beloved time can um, steal the rosy color the rosy hue of the lips and the beautiful uh, charm of the cheeks means with the passing of time the beloved may become old she may lose her physical beauty but true love is not based on physical beauty true love is not based on the attraction of the face or body so that is why it is not uh, times fool it does not change it does not decrease uh, with the passing of time rather it increases so time can have effect on the beauty of a person a beauty of a person changes but the love which is the so called love which is based on beauty will change when the beauty of the beloved will change but he says that true love is based on internal beauty is based on the beauty of the soul so it never changes so he says rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come now who is his his is time and time is here shown as a farmer time cuts everything and he is having a sickle in his hand bending sickle's compass come why bending because it is a knife which is semi circular so time is here shown as a farmer with the help of a metaphor a farmer who grows his crops so time gives us birth then farmer takes care of his crop waters it gives it proper manures fertilizes it and lets the um, field the crop to mature in the same way time with time we grow with time we grow from a child to adolescent from adolescent to a, a young person then from a young person to middle aged person and from a middle aged person towards old age and to from old age to death so so time cuts everything with his sickle as a farmer cuts his crops his own grown crops he cuts he says time is not time's fool the rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come compass means periphery boundary control so he says time which is compared to a farmer time cuts everything cuts means it decreases everything it takes away everything it takes away the uh, rosy color of the lips it takes away the beautiful beautiful charm of the lips it gives wrinkles in the beautiful face we know that uh, uh, every beautiful to beautiful face it declines we have seen so many movie stars uh, declining we have seen them young and working in a movie but what happens when they grow old their beauty and the charm goes away because time is working on them time is like a farmer it is cutting everything so rosy lips and cheeks you are signifying signifies beauty, uh, beauty physical beauty so physical beauty comes under the boundary of time which is like a farmer which cuts everything but true love is not under the control of this farmer's sickle true love does not come under the boundary under the periphery of um, this farmer time so with time beauty may decrease physical beauty may decrease but with time true love never decreases it uh, rather it increases love alters not with his brief hours and weeks his means times love alters not alters i told you the word means changes love does not change with brief 
hours and weeks so time is divided into decades decade is divided into years years is divided into months month uh, months are divided into weeks weeks are divided into days and days are divided into hours and minutes and seconds so these are the brief sections of time so he says love does not change with the changing time love increases love is not bound uh, by time so love alters not with its brief hours and weeks but bears it out even to the edge of doom edge of doom doom means the dooms day judgment day in bible it is written that one day will be judgment day the last day of the world when god will do the judgment when all the living people will die and all the uh, souls of the dying people will uh, awake and they will be uh, judged by god so that will be the last day so he says love does not change with his brief hours and weeks but it will continue till the last day of this world so love never dies true love never dies if this be error and upon me proved now shakespeare has <clears throat> very beautifully express the true the characteristics of true love in the three quatrains and now in the final couplet couplet what is a couplet which uh, couplet contains two lines which rhyme with each other so in the last couplet he says if this be error and upon me proved i never writ nor no man ever loved whatever i have said in this sonnet if this be error if this is erroneous if this is faulty if this is wrong and upon me proved he says that you have to prove that i am wrong he says he gives a challenge to his readers he says if this be error and upon me proved if anybody says that mr shakespeare you are wrong whatever you have uh, told about the true characteristics of love the, it is not so and upon me proved and if some person takes this challenge to prove this wrong upon me he says i never writ nor no man ever loved if it is proved that whatever i have said is wrong it's faulty it is erroneous then i will accept that i never writ i never it means i have never written anything worthwhile i am not a writer i am ready to accept this challenge that if anybody proves that whatever i have written is wrong that then i will accept that i am not a writer i am not a poet i am not a dramatist i never wrote whatever i have written is wrong but nor no man ever loved that person who will challenge me will have to accept that no man ever loved in this world so this is a very uh, challenging sort of ending when shakespeare says that anybody can prove me wrong and if anyone proves me wrong then i will accept the challenge that i am not a writer i never writ nor no man ever loved but you will also have to accept that there was never true love in this whole world now let us have a quick recap of the poem in the first quatrain the poet says that there can be no obstacle in the union of true minds true love never ends he says love is not love which alters when it alteration finds love never changes when it find any changes in the atmosphere changes in the beauty change of place but true love never changes or bends with the remover to remove even if the uh, object of our love is removed from our sight true love never changes oh no it is an ever fixed mark then he compares true love with two things and what are those two things number 1 is the lighthouse 
which is steadfastly fixed in the ocean which is never shaken so true love is never shaken in the storms of life in the problems of life so what is the uh, quality of a uh, lighthouse the quality is that it is ever fixed secondly it can look on tempest means it can uh, face any problem of the world and is never shaken it is so steadfast it is so fixed that it is never shaken it is very strong and the second comparison he says it is the star to every wandering bark it is like the pole star to every wandering bark even if the beloved goes astray it uh, even if the beloved loses direction but true love always gives good direction to a wandering bark then he says that love is not times fool love is not a plaything love is not just attraction love is not just momentary infatuation true love is very very deep so love is not times fool though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come so time is compared here with a farmer with a sickle in his hand the farmer grows his crop takes care of his crop but one day he himself cuts so time gives us everything time gives us beauty strength youth everything and time takes away everything but he says time can take away only the physical beauty time can steal the rosiness the color of the uh, lips and cheeks but time cannot uh, devoid us of true love but bears it out even to the edge of doom true love never changes with the passage of time but it grows and it continues till the last day of the world and what will be the last day according to the bible the dooms day the judgment day then in the last two lines he says that if whatever i have said is not true if it is erroneous and somebody is ready to prove it that you are wrong here you have given the wrong qualities of uh, true love then he says that i never read i will take this challenge challenge that i was never a writer that i have never written anything whatever i have written is worthless but whoever challenges me and if he proves he will have to accept that if whatever i have written is wrong then no man ever loved means there was no true love in this whole world so here we see that it is a very beautiful poem by william shakespeare it is the 116th uh, sonnet <coughs> by william shakespeare and he has shown us he has expressed uh, his uh, feelings on true love thank you